I'm Bren Knowles. I'm a senior lecturer at Lancaster University in the Data Science Institute. Um, I research socially responsible technologies. This work here represents the culmination of discussions um, between myself and several colleagues who are experts in human-computer interaction and aging research. And we came together to think about whether the way that HCI and aging is discussed in the context of accessibility and how those tend to be thought of as one and the same problem, whether that's actually harmful to older adults. So in the paper we try to describe some of the reasons why we think that association between aging and accessibility is harmful for older adults, and then we offer some recommendations for how to do better. So what we were hoping would come from this paper is that the field starts to think beyond accessibility questions when we think about older adults. And we start asking questions not just about is the technology usable, but is the technology useful and acceptable to older adults? And if we start focusing on those questions about why technology may or may not be uh, useful and acceptable to older adults, uh, we might begin to find that we're developing better technologies for everyone. So there have been previous voices in the field that have critiqued this accessibility view of um, aging research in HCI. Um, this paper actually goes a bit further. So we actually say, um, not only is the accessibility frame wrong for thinking about older adults, um, it's actually harmful to older adults. And the reason we think it's harmful in the big picture sense is that it contributes to their marginalization within the digital economy. It perpetuates these really negative stereotypes of aging, that aging is just a process of decline and falling apart. Um, and actually, when technologies are designed in ways that don't actually speak to older adults' needs and wants, then they're less likely to use them. When they're less likely to use them, and we see older adults as not using digital technologies, then we see them as, as a, a group that's not worth designing for almost. We have to recognize that this is a vicious cycle, right? So if you exclude them from the design process and they start to feel like digital technologies don't speak to them, then they're not gonna use them and they're further excluded and the cycle begins again. And that's how they get to be made peripheral to the digital society. They're not actually considered relevant stakeholders anymore. Well, they're not considered relevant stakeholders because you've, you've actively excluded them by not incorporating them into your design process. I mean, one of the things that, that we try to get across in the paper is that if we actually listened to, to what older adults were telling us, they actually have this wealth of, of knowledge um, and perspectives that's, that could really inform better design actually, if we didn't discount it as representing some sort of limitation. So when older adults say, you know, I don't like this technology, or I'm not going to use this technology, if we didn't assume it was because of some sort of physical or cognitive limitation, we might be able to unpack, well, what isn't working for you? Um, and usually we'd find that the same things that aren't working for them don't work for us either. If you think of older adults as needing help or, you know, just, uh, lacking in some way, you end up designing only for that lack. And you don't design for the things that they can actually do and the things that would make other aspects of their lives um, really fulfilling for them. One of the things that we really wanted to get across was that we should be designing to that full spectrum um, so that the technologies really speak to all the different things that might interest older adults. So instead of it being all about um, plugging, plugging a need, if we were actually starting to think, well, what do they want though? Um, it might open up this whole new site for um, exciting innovation. So this paper was, was written before COVID and the world's changed a lot since COVID. Um, one of the things that's changed is that older adults are adopting digital technologies more. And that actually proves the point that it was never an accessibility problem to begin with. It was always about um, usefulness, right? In this case, it's really useful and important um, to be able to kind of book your vaccines online, um, book your doctor's appointments online, these sorts of things. So that kind of proves our point that accessibility was never quite the right framing. So if we now understand that it was always about usefulness and acceptability, but now we've got older adults using digital technologies, do we just forget about those objections that they had? Do we forget about the fact that um, they might need these technologies, but they don't approve of them. So I think this paper is important because um, there are kind of ethical standards we want to uphold in computing. Um, one is that all people should be stakeholders and beneficiaries of computing technologies. And what we're finding is that older adults are much lesser beneficiaries of digital technologies. 
Um, so this paper gives some recommendations for how we can do better so that older adults actually do benefit from digital technologies to the same extent as younger people.